Hi everyone, this is going to be a walkthrough video of the EAR model for Bio 137 Lab at BCTC. And what we see here is the model of a right ear on campus. We also have some left ear models. Everything's the same, it's just gonna be flipped from what we see in this walkthrough. And in this walkthrough, what I've done already is remove the front covering of this right here on the model when you first pick it up. There is uh, some part of the model that actually covers everything so we really couldn't see much. I've gone ahead and taken that off and we still can't see a lot in this view but there's a little bit and we'll cover that and then we'll see much more as we move through the next couple of slides. So what we can see here in this view, this is the external ear which is called either the auricle or the pinna. The auricle or the pinna. That's the external ear. And the hole that goes inward when you stick your finger or something in your ear, which obviously I'm sure you're all familiar with the fact that we are not supposed to stick Q-tips or anything like that into our ear because we can damage uh, some of the inner ear pieces that we'll see in just a moment. But this tube is called the external auditory meatus. Now we saw that when we looked at the skull uh, back before lab exam two. This is the external auditory meatus. So that can kind of help orient you with which part of the head we're looking at. Obviously we know where our ears are, but now this bone that we see here is the skull. So this area right here is where we saw the external auditory meatus on the skull. Some other things that we can see in this view, here is our eardrum, but we will see that uh, a little more clearly on a slide coming up. We can also see some of the, uh, they're called ossicles. These are the ear bones. We have three bones in each ear. They are among the smallest bones in the body. We also have this part right here, which is called either the auditory tube or the eustachian tube. And this uh, connects the inner ear with the back of the pharynx, kind of near the back of the nasal cavity. And that just allows equalization of pressure. Uh, you know, sometimes when you yawn and you have that popping feeling, that's the eustachian tube equalizing the pressure on either side of your eardrum. And sometimes the auditory tube itself kind of opening fully. But let's go ahead and open the ear up a little bit more and see some other structures. So what we see in this view, I've zoomed in quite a bit. So kind of to orient you, here is that uh, a part of the external ear, the auricle, the pinna. Here is that uh, auditory meatus, the external auditory meatus. And what I've done is I've taken off part of the model here that was covering quite a bit of the other structures. Here's that eustachian tube, the auditory tube, and here's the eardrum that we saw a moment ago. We can see the ossicles a little bit better, but I'm still not going to discuss those just yet because we can see them better on our next slide. But what we can see here are these kind of rounded structures. These are called the semicircular canals. And the semicircular canals you might have heard of before, these play a big role in our sense of balance. Um, and then we can see a little bit of this kind of coiled up structure right here called the cochlea. We will see that again on the next slide, isolated from the rest of the ear so we can see it a little bit better. And we can see one of the nerves here. This is called the vestibulocochlear nerve. The vestibulocochlear nerve. We saw that when we were looking at the brainstem model. But let's go ahead and pull out the eardrum and the ossicles, as well as the cochlea and the semicircular canals, and see what they look like individually. Okay. 
So now to orient everyone, this over here on the left, this is the exact same picture from the previous slide. I've just shrunk it down quite a bit. And now what we're seeing over here on the right, here is that eardrum with the uh, ossicles, those small bones, which is what I'm holding in this image right here. My thumb is against the eardrum. And then here are the ossicles, those small bones, and the cochlea and semicircular canals, which is right here. And in the top image, I'm holding everything in place the exact same position that it is actually in the ear. And in the bottom, I've pulled it away so that we can see an extra structure. And then over here on the right, up at the top, this is the eardrum with the ossicles and the cochlea and semicircular canals. So we're going to go through and see all of the parts that we can see in these four images. But I still have this image over here on the left to kind of orient you with what you're actually seeing. So now, as we've seen, this structure is the eardrum. And we can see it again in this image. And it is the round part that's kind of acting as the stand or the base in this image. That's the eardrum. This is actually what sound waves hit when they come into our ears. Now, I keep calling these ossicles, these small bones here, but there are actually three bones that all join together. They're called the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Sometimes you will hear them called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrups, but we have to be more proper. We have to call them malleus, incus, and stapes. So let's see what is what. First, directly behind and touching the eardrum is the malleus. We can see that right here. Next in line is the incus, and we can see that right here and right here. And finally, the stapes, which is this part right here, this part right here. But let's go over and look at the eardrum that's isolated. Over here we can see the eardrum. We have the malleus, which is this bone right here. The incus, which is right here. And the stapes, right here. Now I said up here, I'm holding everything in the exact same position that it actually sits within our skull. And you can see that the stapes connects to the cochlea. Now, when we hear, I said that the eardrum is what is struck by the sound waves coming into our ear cavities. And as the eardrum is hit by those sound waves, it vibrates the malleus, which vibrates the incus, which vibrates the stapes, and then the stapes is going to pass those vibrations into the cochlea, this kind of snail-shaped, coiled-up looking structure right here. And it does that, it, the stapes passes those vibrations to the cochlea through an opening called the oval window. And that's what we see right here when I pull the model apart. Up here, we can't really see the oval window because it's covered by the stapes. Down here, we can. So now let's move over and look at the cochlea model. This whole structure right here that kind of looks like a snail is the cochlea. Now we can clearly see that oval window, which is where the stapes attaches. We can also see the semicircular canals. All right, so those are all of the features that you need to know on the ear model. 
There's also another video for this same lab over the I model. Be sure and watch that if you haven't already. Now, depending on the order that you've watched these videos, this is the last video that I've recorded for our Bio 137 lab. I will wrap up now and I will see you all again in Bio 139. Take care.